Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class. And in today's card class, I will be making a holiday card. And here is a look at the card that we will be making today. I just love this new brushstroke tree stamp from Penny Black. It is so easy to work with and really fun to do some painting with. Here's a look at that cling stamp. It is called Bobble Beauty. And I will have it linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. And speaking of supplies, I will also have a full supply list with all the stamps, ink colors, everything up on screen at the very end of the video. So if you want to take a look at that in more detail at the end of the video, just hit pause and you can check it out. So to begin, I'm stamping in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool, and I'm stamping onto Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. This allows me to get all of the detail of the stamp. Um, it's because it is a very smooth paper, but can also handle some painting and some watercolor. So you can see just with that first impression what great detail you get on that paper. Now I've stamped it a couple of times and I'm using archival ink, so this is going to be a waterproof ink. I wanted it to be waterproof and I also love the color. So again, I thought it was fern green and now I'm going in with a mini archival ink and just adding the trunk in and stamping that down. I masked off the bottom down here and I forgot to take the tape off so <laughs> you can see I did get some of that down at the bottom of the stamping so it really doesn't help to mask it off if you don't remove the tape before you <laughs> close the lid. But I'm probably not the only person that has forgotten to do that. At least I hope I'm not the only one but it all works out in the end. So once I had stamped that image, I'm going to add my painting using Distress Reinkers used as watercolors. I'm going to start with the background, and it's just going to make it easy. That way if I touch any areas of the tree, it's not going to bleed or blend. So I added just a touch of water along this right-hand side, and then I am dropping in some of that blue Distress Reinker. And I'm just blending that out with my paintbrush along those edges. Now you will find painting on the Bristol cardstock is going to feel a little different. Your paints are going to move a little bit differently than they do on the watercolor paper you may be used to. So you might want to practice a little bit on a scratch sheet or just jump right in and see how it goes. But I find it seems like I have a little bit more time to sort of blend things out, um, sort of blend that into the white. Um, although you can't quite add quite as much water without things curling. So my paper does curl a little bit, but I just, when I mounted it to my note card, used some foam tape behind that and it flattened it out. You could also put like a heavy book on top of it overnight to flatten things out as well. So I'm going to do this on both sides of the tree. And you can see there, there's just no problems with anything bleeding or blending because we did all of that stamping with the archival ink. So I'm just adding some of this blue in here. You can see because I wet that first with some water, it buys me some time to blend things out. And that blue sort of starts to travel and move on its own as well. And I'll just work my way up here along the tree. And I tend to fiddle a little bit, so you will see that in the video, just doing a little bit of fiddling and playing around with uh, making sure that things look pretty even, the same about amount of darkness and lightness on each side of that background. And I'm going to be doing some more inking and stamping, so I'm not too worried about being perfect. And that's also something to remember if you are doing this and you're like, oh, this is not looking the best or something just doesn't look right. Just add more layers on top, which I'll be doing um, in a little bit. And it will hide a lot of it when you splatter the snow on top, you splatter some paint on top. That will also hide brush strokes and lots of different things. So don't get too caught up in your background. You can see mine there is nothing super awesome, but it's there and the color has been put down. Now I'm going to work on the tree. Now you can see when you stamp this tree, I love how with Penny Black's brushstroke stamps, they stamp sort of in a two-tone color. You're going to see areas of light and areas of dark. And I am just going to use this as a guide for where to put my paints. So any areas that look light, I am painting that with Evergreen Bow Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor. 
and I'm just kind of letting it loosely flow onto those areas. Some of them are a little bit darker. Um, some of them are the Distress Reinker is more watered down. And you could skip this step and leave the tree as is, but I think this just adds this beautiful look like you just sat down and painted this loosely watercolored tree and you don't have to think about it. The, it tells you, the stamp itself tells you exactly what to do and where to put those paints. This tree especially, I think, is very user-friendly for getting that loose watercolor look and knowing where to put lights and where to put darks. So then I'm just going to go in now with the peeled paint distress reinker used as a watercolor. So there's a little water mixed in with that. And on the areas of the stamp that look darker, I'm just adding that in. And if it starts to mix and blend a little bit with that other color, the evergreen bow that I already put down, that's totally fine. Again, we're not going for perfection. We want this to have a very artsy brush stroke quality to it as if we was just sat down and painted and that there was no stamping involved. Now this card I add quite a few layers and quite a few um, different techniques to it but you can see with this tree this bobble beauty clink stamp it is so beautiful on its own. I really think you could stamp this onto just white uh, onto a white note card and do this painting as I'm showing you here and that in itself without a background painted or anything else would make a beautiful card all on its own. You could add some gold stickles or some gold glitter or red glitter where those bobbles are and you would have a gorgeous card just on its own just with that one stamp. So I'm going to play around here a little bit while that's drying up on top with this snowy area, just trying to decide how I wanted to sort of play with those shadows. Again, the stamp tells you where to put them. I will end up covering up some of this later on, which you'll see, but that's part of the process is just playing around. Now, it's pretty much dry up on top, so I'm just going to take some red and paint in the bobbles. And again, the stamp makes it so easy to do that. Now, I decided I wanted to pull in some of that turquoise color that is on the tree up into the sky. So I'm using an archival ink in the color of Viridian and an ink blending tool and a foam pad just to uh, add some of that color up into the sky, unify it all together, have it make a little bit more sense in, when looking at the card as a whole. So I'm just starting off the edge and working my way on in a circular motion. And now I'm ready to do some stamping. I'm using one of our older stamp sets called Nature's Gift Gifts. This is one I reach to again and again for sort of doing background stamping or winter themed cards. And I'm inking this with Sky Blue Archival Ink. I chose this ink just because it's just a very light, subtle ink. I didn't want to take away from that tree that we painted. I still want that to be the focal point but I wanted to add just a little bit more up into that background area. Now I have my sentiment there just so I can get an idea for placement where I want to do that stamping. And I'm just moving this one stamp around. And by stamping in the misty, I can start with a very light colored ink and then decide if I want to stamp it again to darken things up. And we'll just get it here one more time sort of cover the top portion of the card. Now the sentiment is from, from one of our newest transparent sets called Holy Season. There are so many beautiful sentiments within this set and they fit perfectly right next to, uh, to this tree. So I'm just going to, everything is dry, and stamp this sentiment. So sorry for my head there. I'm just making sure things are straight and lined up where I want them to be. And you can see by stamping the tree just a little bit off center, it adds some interest to the card design. And again, also leaves you a nice place to put your sentiment and keep things well balanced in the end. So I'm going to ink this with a dark brown ink. This is the Acorn Archival Ink. And then I decided I wanted a little bit more of that gray that was down at the bottom of the card, just up here in the sky. So I'm adding some cornflower blue 
Make Art Blendable Dye Ink up at the top and a little bit down at the bottom. Again, just tying in those areas and that kind of creates a visual triangle that surrounds that tree and leads the eye towards the tree by having that in the top right hand, top left horn, hand, and then bottom corner. Now I want to add some snow to this, so I've got some Arteza white gouache paint. I mixed in some water and I'm just going to begin splattering. Now gouache paint is like an opaque watercolor paint, so I find it works really great for splattering and it's also really easy just to clean up your work surface when you're done, just wiping it up with a baby wipe. And so I'm just splattering a lot of this on there. It adds um, a lot to the entire scene. Now I squeeze some onto my acrylic black which I'm using as a palette and I'm painting it on without any water. It adds sort of some thickness to that paint and it's great for adding snow to the branches. So just as an extra added little touch to this tree, I'm just painting it here and there on those branches so that they look snow covered. And I also did add a little bit of that down below the tree, below the trunk, and a few of these more thick, opaque snowflakes around the sentiment, which had been masked when I splattered the background, and also just around the tree and the entire background for some added depth, where some snowflakes are very small and a little bit lighter, and some are thicker and larger. And I, when I was done, I just added some foam tape to the back of this and mounted it to a standard A2 size card. So here's another look at that finished card. I had so much fun working on this background and painting this tree. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also ring that bell that's by the subscribe button to make sure you're notified every time we upload a new video. And you can continue to connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website and our blog. And I will link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below, as well as links to all of the stamps used in today's video. And if you stay tuned here to the very end of this video, up on screen will be that complete full supply list. Thanks for watching.